Uh, well, like most uh, scholars, I have had different principal interests at different moments in my um, thought and life. For the last 12 years, certainly, the greatest concern for me has been to try to think out how God is named, especially in the two great traditions which I see us in so in need of today, namely to understand God in terms of the extraordinary incomprehensibility of God, the mystery of God, both as a comment on our finitude and inability to understand God, and as a commentary on the overwhelming intelligence, incomprehensibility is a positive characteristic, as Karl Rahner insisted, of God. And at the same time of the problem of, as we spoke earlier, of evil and suffering, and the issue of the naming of God as hidden, God is hidden both in terms of human lives, and God is hidden in terms of the suffering, the whole peoples can endure, and that for Christians we see focused in the understanding of the cross and resurrection of Christ. It's this, uh, this need to try, for me to try to articulate who God is, how God can best be named in our time through these namings of the hiddenness of God, the incomprehensible God. In other words, of the great mystics and the great prophets who have become all the more important to me, weren't previously, I admit. I was more interested in what might be called the mainline philosophers and theologians. Now it's the marginal, both individuals like prophets and mystics, and movements like the African-American spirituals and blues and slave narratives that African-American thought has shown is so important for understanding the African-American experience of God and of Christianity. And the same is true with the great liberation theologies and political theologies of our day, that they have made these voices which were once, if not silenced, relatively silent, speak again and speak in their own voices. And as they speak and as we listen, it seems to me ever more clear that the reality of the hiddenness of God in history, in the self, in the realities of suffering, and the overwhelming intelligence and joy that comes with that intelligence, as you can find in the mystics, in the incomprehensibility of God, will become more and more central realities for all of us. I think Karl Rana had a point when he was quoted as saying that in the future Christians will be mystics or they won't be Christians. There's truth to it. Mystic doesn't mean extraordinary or unusual experiences. It means paying genuine attention, genuine openness to and attention to the reality of God in our everyday lives. And as that becomes more and more powerful, as surely it does when you read the lives of the mystics, it also becomes, for most of us, something that helps us to name God anew with intense namings, like the mystics used, of the mystery or incomprehensibility of God as God, or as Luther or Calvin and Pascal and many of the great prophets used, of the hiddenness of God in our lives and in the lives of especially of oppressed peoples.